Have you ever said something like this? I don't want my children to disobey me. However, if they do, I'll have to discipline them for their own good. What you've just done there is you've made a statement called a situation response where you offer the situation, if my, I hope my children do not disobey me, their potential disobedience, and the result or the response. If they do, I will have to discipline them. There's a situation and then there's a response to that potential situation. This is used quite frequently during uh, the Gospels, quite frequently in narratives in Scripture. And it gives the situation, again, what is happening or what could happen and what could be the response if that action were to take place or if that situation came to fruition. So let's look at what a situation response is, and then we'll look at what that is in Scripture and how to identify it. Let's look at situation response. A good definition for situation response is a statement of response to a situation or action. A situation response is most often found in narrative discourses. The symbol we're going to use for a situation response is SIT for situation and a capital R for response. The key words that we're going to be looking for are although, yet, although, yet, nevertheless, but, and, however. So if we're going to see one of uh, uh, these examples of a situation response in Scripture, we can look in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. It says this, How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. So to switch these into uh, propositions, we would say, how often would I have gathered your children together? And then we see as, so that's a key word, as, so it's going to compare something like or as, there's a comparison there, so we're going to split it right there into another proposition. As a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and then we see, and you would not. So there's the third, and you would not. That's the, that's the response that they gave to Jesus wanting to gather them under his wings. So how often would I have gathered your children together? And then as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, there's a comparison between Jesus' gathering the children together and a hen gathering um, the chicks under her wings. And then you have the response to that, and you would not. So, you should have three propositions there. One, how often would I have gathered your children together? Two, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. And three, and you would not. So you write, justify it, and then we start connecting. We connect the first things first. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? That's a comparison. Jesus is comparing again his gathering of Israel together to a hen gathering her brood under her wings. So that's a comparison. So we're going to mark that with the CF, comparison. How does this comparison fit with the third proposition? The situation is Jesus desiring to gather uh, children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and the response to that situation is the refusal, and you would not. So the situation, attempt to gather, the response and you would not. So, notice a situation response appears mostly in narrative, like in the Gospels, and occasionally in the epistles when a writer is recounting events. So that's a situation and response. We have a situation or a potential situation met with the response or the potential response from that situation. We use it all the time when we talk, okay? We want to do something, and if or although or but, we say those words. If that happens, then this will be the response. We say it a lot with our kids. If we do this, then the response will be this, okay? So that's a situation response. Be aware of that when you're reading. Uh, it, it can feel very uh, similar to an if-then say, if, statement because you've got if you do this, then this will happen. Very similar to if-then statements, but just a slight difference in the nuance. So pay attention to that. Practice those. Watch this video a couple times and kind of see 
where the nuance is and all that good stuff. For the next session, we're going to be wrapping our session and our series up on Bible tracing. What we're going to be doing in the next session is we're going to take an extended passage. We're going to go through not just one example, but we're going to have a section of Scripture, and we're going to map the whole thing out and see what it looks like when you put all of these things together and what it looks like to trace not just a little piece of Scripture or just one verse, but maybe an extended passage as well. So come for that. That'll be our last teaching session, and then we'll conclude in our last video with some concluding remarks. So uh, we'll see you in the next session, and we'll do a whole uh, passage together as we conclude our sessions on Bible tracing.